Whether you outsource or do your embroidery design in-house, having the capability to edit your embroidery designs is a must. Reshaping your objects, adjusting stitch settings, or reducing color changes will all help you save time and money on your machine. And of course, make you more profitable as a business. So let's take a look at how we do editing in Woolcom Embroidery Studio Digital Edition. So let's start by first understanding some of the basic reshape and editing tools available in Woolcom's Embroidery Studio Digital Edition. Now I've created a very simple shape on screen. It's a satin column which has a slightly wider middle than it does towards the ends and it just stitches from left to right as it goes across the screen. And again, while I'm editing, I can change my view options to either show or not show my outlines, show or not show my stitches, and also my stitch penetration as well. Now, I like to leave them all on because I wanna see the object outline, I wanna see the stitches, and I certainly wanna see my stitch penetrations because it helps me better understand my design. Now, to edit or reshape an object in Wilcom Embroidery Studio, you can select the object, and from your left toolbar, you can click the reshape icon or the H shortcut key on your keyboard. Now this will take you into the reshape mode and will present this reshape views toolbar. Now this toolbar lets you control what you see on screen. And it's important to understand what each of these icons are and what they mean as a part of your embroidery object. First of all, you have your reshape nodes and they're represented by these yellow square nodes or these cyan round nodes. And the difference being is that a square node is a straight point and a cyan round node or circle node is a curved point. And you can turn them on and off while you're editing. Next to that is your stitch angle tool. Now as a column stitch, when you're defining the width of an object, you're also defining the stitch angle as well. And that is represented by these peach colored square angles here. When you mouse over, you also get the angle of the stitches at that point, and you can turn them on and off as well. Finally are two symbols, usually at the beginning and end of an object, which is the green entry point diamond and the red exit point cross. This tells your object where to start sewing from and where to finish sewing from. Really important to resequence your design and avoid trims on the machine. Now, while you're in reshape mode, you can move any of these objects or nodes. If I want to make this uh, satin column a little wider, I can select this node here and just drag it up and make it a little bit more wider. If I want to adjust the stitch angle, I can select the stitch angle tool and just angle that on screen and change the stitch angle. And if I want to change the overall shape of that object, I can add additional nodes by selecting either right click for a curve point or left click for a straight point on my object. And again, I can move and reshape them on screen as well. But let's undo those changes and take it back to the original state of my object. Now in this case, I wanna make this object a little bit wider in the middle. So I will increase its size. So it's got more of a thinner start here and more of a scallop wider view and stitching back around here. Now the next part of my design, I want to create like a, a squiggly line running down the center here. But at the moment, because of where my start and end point is, my object starts here represented by the green diamond and ends here represented by the red cross. And as I go back in my stitches, you can see that's exactly what it does. It finishes here. So if I start digitizing a new object here, the problem is that my design will potentially cause a trim and jump across here and then start stitching down here. Now, as you know, on a machine, every time your machine slows down and performs a trim, the machine does slow down, so it costs you time and money, but also it increases the risk of a thread break during that trim process. So I want to reshape this object. So instead of it finishing here on the end, it is finishing about here in the middle, ready to stitch down. So all I do is I pick up that red end point drag it with my mouse position anywhere along the edge of the object, such as here. And the software will automatically resequence that object and automatically create any travel stitches needed to get that object to move around and end where you want it to end. So now if we go back and look at that stitch sequence again, it will stitch through from this side 
And at the point where I told it to finish, it says, well, this is where I'm going to stop and I'm going to do a travel run down the middle of your object. And then I'm going to travel back over that travel run, stitching it to the point where it's ending where you told me to end it. And then I'm free to grab my next tool and create my next object like a freehand run stitch. And I don't have a trim. It's traveled nicely and jumped across and completed that additional line. Now, if I go back to reshape mode, and move that cross back to where it finished originally, let's see what happens. Straight away we see a few new symbols appear on screen. We see a black triangle and a black circle and a faint red dash run stitch or line running across here. Now what that means is as it's stitching down, it says, well, I need to get over here and I can't stitch there because that will look bad on your garment. We don't want a line running across there. So I need to perform a tie off and a trim at this point. It will then trim and then it will jump across as a machine movement, do a tie in and then begin to sew that line there. So if I turn on my true view, you won't see that jump stitch because it's just the machine jumping through the air. And that's what it will look like on the end garment. But again, I don't really want that because it's a trim. It's a risk of a thread break. So I do want to reshape that. I do want to drag back my cross and I want it to finish there and perform a nice simple jump across there and stitch that all in one go without any trims. So reshaping is an important tool to use to change the shape of your object, add additional nodes, change stitch angles, and of course, adjust your start and end point on your object. Another important editing function is to manage and control your connectors between your embroidery objects. These are the trims between different objects as represented here by a triangle for the trim and a circle for your tie-in. Now design with many trims can cost you production time because every time your machine trims it slows down, performs the trim and then speeds back up again. And every time it trims there's also a risk of an additional thread break causing more downtime on your machine. So as a part of your editing function it's important to understand how connectors work and how you can modify them in your Embroidery Studio software. Now in this example, I've got three objects. I have a lettering object here, which has a lot of trims between each letter and two separate objects down here with a connector and trim between the two. Let's focus on the lettering first. Now lettering is a special type of object in Wilcom Embroidery Studio. Collectively, it is a single object in which we can view in our color object list a single lettering object, but truly a lettering object is made up of lots of little objects, different patches that sequence together to look like the letters, and each of them are pathed in a certain way to avoid trims. But of course, between letters, that's where you sometimes get your trims on your machine. So we're gonna focus on that and get a good understanding of how you can adjust those trim settings between your letters. Now, the first thing you wanna do is select your object, right click and go to object properties and then select the connectors tab. Now there's two ways of setting your connectors. There's an after object and an inside object option. Now after object makes a bit of sense, right? When an object is finished, there is a connector value, in this case a trim here, and it's trimming down to this next object here, which ends here, and then there's a next object here. So by modifying the after object connector values, you're modifying the trims between each object, this trim here and this trim here. But with a lettering object, I have lots of trims inside the object. That's where I change the drop-down list to say inside object. And now whatever settings I'm setting here will affect the trims inside this lettering object. Now my current settings are to trim after if my next connector is more than two millimeters away, which means all these gaps here are at least two millimeters or more apart to create a trim. And we can test that by zooming in closer to a connector, press B on the keyboard and draw a box, then press M on your keyboard for measure and click once and drag and we can see, yep, it's 2.4 millimeters long and that's why it's trimming and putting a connector between those options there. So again, we'll go back and select that object. We're on the connector tab and we're on inside object. 
and I've got a few choices to affect these trims. First of all, I'll turn on True View because that's what we're gonna see on the machine. We're gonna see these little tie-in stitches and then we're gonna see no gap. Then tie-in stitches and no gap, tie-in tie stitches and then no stitches between that gap. With True View off, we can see the connector symbol and the jump line in between. Now, if I turn my trim off, we'll now see that the trim symbols have gone away. And if I turn on True View, we'll now see that there's a stitch between each one of those. And that's what you'll see on your machine. Now, it really depends what you're looking for. Maybe you want your design to run really fast with no trims, but in which case you will see those connector values between each one of those. And still, if I go to my tie off option, I'm still performing a tie off because my setting says tie off before a trim, always tie off on the last stitch and tie off if the next connector is more than two millimeters. So because this is now off, but this is still set to two millimeters, it is performing that tiny little tie off stitch, which you can see by these little stitches here, which again, you may not want because you're tying off for no particular reason. So I can select that object and I can also turn my tie off off as well. And now you see that those tie off stitches are now gone away. Now again, it depends what you're looking for. In this case, it'll sew the entire lettering object with no trims or tie offs in between each lettering. But if your machine operator looks at that and sees that stitch and says, you know what, that looks a little bit long, I'm gonna get out those scissors and manually trim them off. Then you've got some potential problem because without any tie off or tie in, that thread could just unravel. So that's a risk of having a, a large connector like that. Now, what would happen if this lettering object had two words and a larger space between that? So let's change that now to a two word word, which has the word one, a space and the word two. Now, because I've turned all my connectors off, I'm having no trims between any of my objects, which is really not what I want on the machine. So I'm going to, with my object selected, being a lettering object with connectors tab inside object selected, I'm going to go back to connect if my connector is longer than two millimeters, but the save connecting between these ones, I would, I'm happy to just to jump across there, but I do want to trim here. I'm going to change my trim setting to say only trim if the gap is greater than six millimeters. And I know that the spacing between each of those letters is just over two millimeters, so that won't trim. But between my two words, which is the larger space, greater than six mil, it will trim. And now that I've changed my trim settings, I also need to set my tie off settings. And again, I will set that to be greater than six mil. So between these objects, it won't tie off or trim, but between these two objects, it will perform the tie off and then the trim. Now let's look how we affect trim settings or connector settings between two separate objects. Just like we did before, you select the object where the trim originates from, you select on the connector tab, but because we're now affecting a trim after the object, we change the drop down list to after. Now if we measure between those two objects, press M on the keyboard, and drag your ruler, it's just under six millimeters. So if I come back to this object, select it, connect the tabs after object, and trim only if my next object is greater than six mil, once again, the object will not trim because this connector is just under six mil. As this object gets further away, greater than six mil, it will start to trim. As I bring it back to be less than six mil, the trim will go away and I'll have a connector stitch between the two. Understanding how connectors work can save you a lot of time on your embroidery machine. So again, with lettering objects, it is a single object and to modify connectors inside the object, you choose inside object. And after individual objects, you choose after object. Another important editing task to understand is re-sequencing your design to avoid unnecessary color changes on your machine. And to demonstrate this, I've got a simple flower design. Now, if I open up my color object list, I can see my group of colors, the blue first, followed by the yellow, and the blue made up of four different petal objects 
and finally the yellow center of the flower. Now as a single design on its own, if I go to slow redraw and play that, it's sequenced okay. It does each of the petals or the blue first, so I'm not getting any color changes, and then it does the yellow last. But if I was to make multiple copies of this object by selecting it on screen and right click dragging, we'll make a copy, let it go and right click drag to make another copy and another copy. Now when I look at my color object list, I'm repeating the blue, yellow, blue, yellow, and blue, yellow, and that is not good for my embroidery machine. That's a lot of unnecessary trims. And we can see that by opening up the design information tab and under the design section, we can see this design currently has 11 trims. It only has two colors, but eight stops or color changes and 11 trims. And that's not really efficient for my machine. Now that's where your color object list can come into play and to help you resequence those designs. Now, a simple way to do that would be to simply drag your colors on screen. So I can pick up this blue and drag it up to be there, then pick up this blue, drag it up to be there, and pick up this blue and also drag it up to be there. And now I've resequenced that. So if I now look at that sequence, I've got now two colors, only two stops, and down to eight trims. And that is now far more efficient on my machine as we can see with the slow redraw.